Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain to you about SharpCam's user interface and the conceptual differences between SharpCam and other CAD CAM systems. SharpCam is a multi document interface. This means that you can be working on more than one part at a time. So, for example, if I choose the window menu command, and down the bottom here, we can see a list of the currently open parts. So, the one with the tick is the current part we're looking at. And if I was to select this one here, we're then looking at a different part. For example, I could tile these parts vertically, and you can see there are, we have more than one part running at a time. You can, there's no limit to the number of parts you, you can be running simultaneously. Now, dock to the left-hand side of each part is what we call the part manager. This contains a, a series of tabs of which you'll see their uses throughout all of the uh, accompanying videos. Uh, the one I'd like to concentrate on for this video is the Properties tab. So let me just maximize this example here. Now the Properties tab is used to display the interface for any action that requires user input, typically uh, values, x and y dimensions, etc. Now the beauty of this is that there are no dialog boxes displayed that require you to input data that therefore would be obscuring your view and preventing you from taking other courses of action part way through a specific command. So for example, let's say that I want to draw a line. I choose the line command. And as you can see, the interface is displayed in a properties tab. So let's key in uh, the start point for the line. So we'll take those X10 and, and Y10. And now SharpCam requires the end point. Now there is no time where you can't change the view. So you might want to change the view. There are a number of ways of changing the view. Up on the menu command menu here, we have a number of commands where we can change the view. But the best way is to use the middle mouse. You can pretty much do everything you want with the, with the middle mouse. So if I point the middle mouse at an area that I want to zoom in on and wheel it, as you can see, we're, we're zooming in and out. So maybe down here, say. Then if you want to pan the view, you can hold down the middle mouse button. As you can see, the cursor has changed to indicate that we're panning and then we can pan the view around. If you notice, we're still drawing the end of the line. We've not been kicked out at all of that mode. And if we want to rotate the view, we could either choose the rotate view command here, or if you press the control key down, which I am now, and then you click the middle mouse wheel, you can see that the cursor has changed to the rotation icon. And now I can rotate the view around to any desired position. Uh, and then we have some standard views over here. So typical top, bottom, etc. And then uh, lastly isometric. But let's just change back to the top view. So as you can see, I was able to change the view uh, at will. And there is no time where you can never not change the view. So let's just um, put the end of line on the center of that circle. Now you would have noticed, uh, even bearing in mind that this is a video and the quality uh, is not what you would see when using SharpCam proper, but you're certainly not going to see any flickering of the graphics. Uh, systems priced in the range that SharpCam is typically wouldn't use um, high performance graphics and there's two types of high performance graphics there's microsoft uh, DirectX and there's opengl and sharpcam uses uh, microsoft DirectX. so because we're using this high performance graphics we're able to give you dynamic rotation and panning without any flickering graphics now because the user interface is displayed in the properties tab this enables us to bring you another technology so I'd like to demonstrate this by uh, editing an existing operation. So I'm just going to flip over to the Operations tab, right click on the rough inner pocket and choose Edit. So as you can see, all the information required for the pocketing is contained within the Properties tab. So of course we can change the view, pan and rotate at leisure. But another interesting feature of SharkCam is that because we're able to generate our toolpath so quickly, any changes you make are acted upon immediately. So you'll see the change reflected in the graphical area and, and in fact in the NC Code tab, which uh, you'd need to take a look at the always there NC Code 
video. So let me demonstrate this. If I uh, choose an isometric view, and then, for example, I want to change a uh, the step over to three, and maybe the depth to twenty, and the number of passes to five. And any time you actually have to physically uh, refresh the view is when you change the values in a box because you might want to change a number in one go as which I've just done then we're just going to apply them all immediately so as you can see the is instantly changed we've got uh, five passes if I go to the top view you can see we've got a much finer step over and the total depth is a lot deeper and obviously the NC code has already been created so any action you take is immediately uh, reflected if I undo that and perhaps show you something on the entry so if I turn off the smart ramp, if you see immediately there, the smart ramps change. If I put it back and turn it off, uh, if I put on an entry line and maybe ramp in it. So you can see as I do make a change, it's instantly changing. So for example, I go to the advanced tab, maybe I want to start from the outside. So you saw there the pocketing is instantly recalculated. Uh, we could change the direction of cut. And if you notice there, the direction arrows are now showing that we're now cutting in the, the other direction. So anything you do is instantly changed. Uh, let's demonstrate that on a, a profile operation. So if we right click on the rough outside profile and choose edit. Let's go to the top view. Uh, let's have a look at what the entry and exits do. So entry, let's check the line. So did you see that the line appears immediately? If I want an arc. So the idea with shark cam is rather than um, number one guessing what something does and rather than having to look at a picture you make the change in the context of what you're doing and you see what happens it happens so quickly and instantly that, you, that you, it's much better just to, to do it and watch what happens so for example what if I want a 45 degree sorry 45 degree angle and refresh that because it's a value as you can see the um, the angles changed and then go to the exit and check the line and the arc that's at 90 we've got separate angles for both and uh, maybe I want to know what does this ramp do well let's try it and see what happens okay yeah so we can see that's ramping in if I turn the line off you can see now it's not that easy to see but that is actually an arc ramping in if I make that 359 which is the largest and refresh that you can see that we're helically ramping into depth. So with Shark Cam, you, you can see what happens immediately. Let's add a, an island to this pocket gym routine. I'm just going to delete this line because that looks a bit out of place. So I'm just going to draw a random shape here. Like so. Right click, select mode. Uh, go back to the operation, edit that. Select the island and then add that and instantly the pocketing has been recalculated for us so what you won't see in shark cam is a button that says regenerate in other words you're expected to implement the updates yourself after making a change well that's really asking for trouble in shark cam if you do something it the change is made instantly and you don't have to worry about doing it yourself and what more it's done very quickly and that's the end of this video thank you very much